So Chat GPT-4 is out and available for people using Chat GPT Plus. Okay, at the moment it's just for people who are using Plus version, not the free version. And there's all kinds of exciting updates. We're going to go through it all in this video, so don't go anywhere. And um, by the way, I found out about this from my very own ChatGPT group. Um, lots of members have been commenting on it right here. ChatGPT4 just landed, abundance of possibilities. ChatGPT4 is here and so on. So join this free community. The link is underneath this video because this is where it's at. We're getting uh, hundreds of members joined per day. So without further ado, let's just take a look at what this bad boy can do now. And I'll just play their very brief video here and they'll run through everything for you. GPT-4 takes what you prompt it with and just runs with it. From one perspective, it's a tool, a thing you can use to get useful tasks done in language. From another perspective, it's a system that can make dreams, thoughts, ideas flourish in text in front of you. GPT-4 is incredibly advanced and sophisticated. It can take in and generate up to 25,000 words of text, around eight times more than ChatGPT. It understands images and can express logical ideas about them. For example, it can tell us that if the strings in this image were cut, the balloons would fly away. This is the place where you just get turbocharged by these AIs. They're not perfect, they make mistakes, and so you really need to make sure that you know the work is being done to your level of expectation. But I think that it is fundamentally about amplifying what every person is able to do. GPT-4 training finished last August, and everything that's been happening in the past few months up until we've released it has been a giant sprint to make it safer, more aligned, and also more useful. We have put in already a lot of internal guardrails around things like adversarial usage, unwanted content and privacy concerns. And when we release a model, we know things are not done. We know we have to learn. We know we have to update. We know we have to keep improving all the systems around it to make it suitable for society. To me, the most compelling use cases of these technologies will come from starting with a real human need. The obvious one where these systems have really incredible potential is in education. GPT-4 can teach a huge range of subjects. Imagine giving a fifth grader a personal math tutor with unlimited time and patience. It's a great tool to bring learning to everyone in a way that is personalized to their skill level. GPT-4 brings the dream of having the most useful, helpful assistant to life. It's really about adding as much value to everyday life as possible. The partnership that OpenAI has with Microsoft is to shape this technology into something that's gonna be useful for the world. The power of AI, hopefully, is that it can help us be more productive, which ultimately leads to better quality of life. The development of the transistor, of the computer, of the internet, the semiconductor industry, all the programming languages, everything came together to produce AI technology. And while it is very limited, it is already easy to imagine what the impact of a successor many generations down the line will look like. We think that GPT-4 will be the world's first experience with a highly capable and advanced AI system. So we really care about this model being useful to everyone, not just the early adopters or people very close to technology. So it is really important to us that as many people as possible participate so that we can learn more about how it can be helpful to everyone. And there we go. So interesting. They didn't give away like a ton of new features with this update, really, from what I can tell. Um, you know, one thing, if we go to this creativity part here, um, it's saying that basically it's more creative and collaborative than ever before. It can generate, edit and iterate with users on creative and technical writing tasks which it kind of could before really anyway. Um, but I think basically overall, ChatGPT4 is gonna be smarter. It's a smarter technology, greater intelligence. But one thing that I do think is a bit of a game changer is its ability to recognize images. And I'm gonna try this right now. So um, what I went and did is go and find some pictures and I just thought, do you know what, I'll just Put in rainbow photo. I'm going to copy the URL, so copy the image address by right clicking on it. And now, if I just go to here and just say, um, 
can you tell me what's in the following photo, please? And then let's just link to that and then see what it comes back with. Whoa, here we go. The photo the, the photo you linked to appears to be a picture of a rainbow. A rainbow is a natural meteorological phenomenon that occurs when sunlight is refracted. Wow, look at that. And then it tells you about the rainbow and all of the colors within it. So that's pretty cool. Let's try a different one now because one of the things they advertise here is, you know, um, an input of what can I make with these ingredients? And it's got, you know, egg, flour, looks like maybe butter and some milk and stuff. So I don't know how well that will work. I mean, how can you tell what, uh, you know, that flour is really? Could, it could be all kinds of different things. So let's go, could even be like sugar maybe. So, okay, let's try this one again then. Can you tell me what food I could make with the following ingredients in this photo? All right, here we go again then. Let's see how it gets on with this. Oh, my life. <laughs> Based on the ingredients in this photo, you could make a variety of baked goods, such as chocolate chip cookies, um, banana bread, blueberry muffins, and lemon cake, anyone? So now that while that's kind of true, it's not totally true because, for example, with blueberry muffins, it says here, obviously you're going to need blueberries um, and you're going to need some uh, vegetable oil. And within that photograph, I did not see any blueberries. So it's kind of giving you the this is the basis for that food. So it's not quite there yet. So, you know, maybe they need to work on that part a little bit. One thing that really struck for me, because this has been a real pain, particularly when we're training chat GPT to understand a, get a product or something, maybe you want to copy all of the text from your website or a big long article and paste it in, then it just dies and it says it's too long. So now it's capable of handling over 25,000 words. Now, even a decent size long article that you'd find on a website is probably, you know, going to be less than 2,000 words. So that really does make uh, life a lot easier when it comes to summarizing things, generating additional content from the content that you enter into chat GPT. So this is going to be great. Um, then I also see that they've got a demonstration here um, when they basically say, describe her, her Super Bowl performance and what made it special with regards to Rihanna here. And then it's just giving you an output example there. And that, that would have been an extremely long text that it went to to go and collect that information. Um, and it's basically, as I said before, more intelligent. That's really the message that we're getting here. I don't see any new, particularly groundbreaking, unbelievable things that it can do other than I think the image recognition and the greater amount of text. The rest, I think you're going to notice slight improvements as you go along using um, the software. Um and then it's talking here about uh, outperforming ChatGPT and how well it does. Oh, look at this. This is a good one here. Uniform bar exam, uh, ChatGPT uh, was 10th uh, and then 90th GPT-4. Biology Olympiad, 31st for ChatGPT and 99th with GTP-4. So basically what it is saying is that it is, it is smarter. Uh, and in fact, it says here that uh, they've spent six months doing this. One, one thing I want to pluck out as well from that video is that she said that the it had been trained and it had finished training or something in August of last year. Now, does that mean that all the data that ChatGPT has is up to that date? Because previously it was only up to June 2021. So if that's the case, if it is up to that new date of uh, 2022 August, that will be really good because obviously it's got some new fresh content that it understands. So we'll be delving into that more, um, you know, as we go through everything. And then it gives you some examples that you can go and have a look at and then uh, see how other companies have already been using G GPT-4 for some time. And then at the bottom there, it uh, talks about its limitations and then the, the infrastructure is all on Microsoft's Azure AI supercomputers. I understand the last time I read about this is that uh, ChatGPT is running on the fifth most powerful supercomputer in the world. So that gives you some idea. 
And availability of this, it's on ChatGPT Plus, as you've just seen um, in that demonstration that I gave you there. And then also it says as well uh, as an API for developers, which we know that uh, the API is already available for ChatGPT. Is it available for ChatGPT4? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. It does say join the API waitlist there. So perhaps it isn't available just yet. But I hope you found this video useful, an overview of ChatGPT4, what it can do. Please uh, click the link underneath, actually, if you want to go straight to this page and read it from the horse's mouth. And then don't forget to check out uh, our free community, which is where I heard about it first, <laughs> you know, from this very, very community right here, where we've got hundreds of people joining every day, ChatGPT users uh, right here. Just go on and join. And I look forward to seeing you in the community and we can all discover more things about what ChatGPT4 can do that the last version could not. All right, thanks very much and I'll see you in the next video.